Hi everyone, my name is Megan from the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I am doing my five month postpartum update. I haven't done one of these in quite a few months. I think I did one at one month postpartum and I haven't done one since. So there's a few things to update you guys on and I'm excited to share how I've been doing and so let's get right into this update. still been doing really well breastfeeding which is super exciting. I am coming up on about the time when my milk supply dropped off with my daughter Sophia because I was pregnant with Demi. So I'll be excited to get past kind of that milestone. I know that my milk supply went away for a really good reason because I was pregnant but it's just going to be kind of a good reassurance that my body knows what it's doing and that I'm able to breastfeed for as long as I want. I'm hoping to at least breastfeed him to a year and past if he wants to. I just like last week stopped using the Hakka. I had still been using it every single morning on each side when he would nurse and I would get about eight or nine ounces for my daughter to drink which was really awesome that I was able to give her like five months more breast milk but I finally got tired of it and it's just kind of a hassle to deal with and I just wanted to nurse him without having to worry about pumping and so we finally stopped and I feel really good about having given her five months of milk. I also just started my period for the first time since before I was pregnant with him. I thought I would start it sooner because with my daughter I got it back at two months but I didn't get mine back with him until five months and especially since he sleeps so good he sleeps through the night. He sleeps from about like eight or nine whenever we put him to bed for the night and then he'll sleep until basically whenever I feel like getting up, which is usually anywhere between 6.30 and 8. So just because I go such a huge stretch, like almost 12 hours without nursing him, I thought for sure I would get it back a lot sooner than this. But I was actually really excited to get it back. I do actually really enjoy having my period. I will link a video for you guys about how I manage my period naturally and all the reusable and chemical free products I use and just natural pain management and all that good stuff. I have been having quite a bit of hair loss, which is pretty darn annoying. I remember this was kind of the worst part of my postpartum with my daughter too. It just pulls out by the handful and there's hair all over the floor and when I vacuum it clogs the vacuum and I have to cut all the hair off the bristles and when I sweep it like it's all tangled up in the whatever you call them the, the stuff on the end of the broom you know the bristles or something. I've been taking some collagen capsules from Radiant Life and that's supposed to be really good for hair and nails and just all kinds of stuff so I'm hoping that that'll help stop it a little bit sooner. I had hair loss with her until I got pregnant with Demi so I'm not really sure when it would normally end if I don't get pregnant this time but I'm excited for it to end because I don't enjoy my hair falling out. I mean it's still really thick. It's not because my hair is getting thin it's just because I hate cleaning it up. So around like three months postpartum I had lost pretty much all of the baby weight. I am normally 140. I'm 6'1", so that's a really good weight for my height. And during pregnancy, I get all the way up to 200 pounds. With Sophia, my thyroid is a lot higher than this time, and I lost all of it by three months and kept it off. And this time around, I did lose most of it by three months, but then lately I've been back up to 160, which is perfectly fine with me. I actually wanted to lose the weight a bit slower just because it's better for breastfeeding and it also means that my thyroid isn't as high if I got some weight back because that's one of my symptoms with hyperthyroid is that I lose weight really fast and it's hard for me to gain weight. But my belly is still squishy, I still have stretch marks here and there and extra fat in places that I kind of wish I didn't have it but I'm actually feeling really confident in my body and that it grew two humans, which is pretty amazing. And just the fact that breastfeeding will probably be able to last longer if I have a little bit extra weight. I have been doing yoga every day, or pretty much every day, and just not on the weekends when Luke's home because we're usually working on other projects. But for pretty much all the weekdays when he's working, I do my yoga in the morning and I've been feeling so good. It's been just so much fun. I've actually been enjoying the actual process of working out. I have always hated yoga. And so I don't know what it is about this last postpartum time that I've been really enjoying it. But for the first two weeks, I mainly looked forward to how I'd feel after I worked out. Just the satisfaction that I had done it, that it was gonna get easier, and then I felt a little sore and tired. That's just a really satisfying feeling. And then after two weeks, I actually started looking forward to the process, the actual working out. So it's been a lot of fun for me. And I've never been a, someone who's big into working out, but lately I've been really enjoying it. I have been having quite a bit of trouble with bladder infections. Starting at around a month or two postpartum, I started getting these chronic bladder infections. I actually had to go to the doctor 
like two or three times to get an antibiotic because it turned into a kidney infection. I hardly ever have to go to the doctor, not unless it's going to be something that's like serious. And I know with kidney infections, you can like turn septic and it can be really, really dangerous. So I didn't really want to mess around with that and trying home remedies with that one. But I had gotten like six bladder infections and two or three kidney infections since he had been born at only like three months postpartum. I actually had gone to a physical therapist because I thought maybe it was like a bladder prolapse because I know that can cause more bladder infections just because of the angle your bladder to that. And there is just a very, very minor bladder prolapse, but not enough to cause bladder infections. And so we finally discovered that I have kidney stones, which is a big bummer. Because now that I've had them, I'll be more prone to them in the future. So that's been my only symptom of the kidney stones, is these chronic bladder infections. I've been having to take D-mannose every day, several times a day, to keep the bladder infections down. And then I've been seeing my naturopath for the kidney stones. I'm on two different herbs and also a phosphorus supplement and a magnesium supplement. And I've been drinking a gallon of water a day. I try to make sure I have lemon juice in the water because that can also be really good for the kidney stones. But basically they could have been there for years and getting rid of them naturally without like a surgical procedure can take a while. So I've been working on it for a few weeks now and it could take months. So I'm just keeping up with taking my D-mannose for the bladder infections and I'm just taking all my herbs and supplements for the kidney stones. So I'm just hoping that I'll be able to keep on top of the bladder infections and it won't turn back into a kidney infection and I won't have to go to the doctor and they'll just pass on their own. And breastfeeding can contribute to kidney stones because you need to drink more water. And I'm, I've never been really great at staying hydrated. It's one of my things I have a really hard time with. But I just need to change that. From now on, I need to drink between three quarts and a gallon of water a day for like the rest of my life because I'm getting more prone to the kidney stones if I get dehydrated. I've also been off of high oxalate foods and that can also help. And another thing that can contribute to it is high thyroid, which I had. So just between breastfeeding and high thyroid and I need a high oxalate diet in general and being dehydrated, it was kind of like all these things compiling and it caused the problem. So that's been a whole big fiasco that's kind of annoying that I got those. I've been on my herbs for my thyroid as well and it's looking really good. My T3 is back down in the normal level, which is awesome. The T4 just has a little bit more to go, so I just need to keep up with my supplements and stuff and my diet and it'll come all the way back down. But I've been feeling really good, other than getting the bladder infections, with, which is an absolutely infuriating feeling to have a bladder infection. Other than that, I've been feeling really good physically. I'm really thankful that I didn't get postpartum depression again. I had it with my daughter and thankfully this time I haven't struggled with it at all. I've been feeling really positive and just so excited about life and these little babies are such a blessing. I love being their mother. So I've been feeling pretty good postpartum. I'll just have to get these kidney stones dealt with and then I'll be perfect. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little postpartum update and I will see you in the next video. Bye!